Hey there, this is Akshay Nandan and welcome back to a new video. From this video, I'm kickstarting a complete course on Creo AI. So what is a Creo AI? Creo AI is the leading multi-agent platform. Within this video, we'll be covering what is an agent, what are multi-agents, and why do you need these frameworks like Creo AI, Langraph, Haystack, Agents SDK, uh, then ADK by Google. There are so many SDKs and frameworks just for building these agents. And why are we learning Creo AI? Because I think Creo AI is not as complex as Langraph, where you need to handle every node of your agent, every edge of your agent. You have to think where to connect, what part. Uh, you have to handle a lot of things in Langraph. In Creo AI, and plus it is not as low key as NITN and Gumloop, where you just get no code environment and you just have to drag and drop the uh, components and you have to just connect them and build your agent. It is not as low key as NITN, it is not as complex as Langraph. You, as a coder, you get to code your AI agent and you don't have to handle a lot of stuff also. So, uh, many beginners, uh, industrialists, uh, enterprises are using this Creo AI as you can see uh, which all companies are using Creo AI for building their production ready AI agents. So that's why it becomes very important for a software engineer today to learn Creo AI because everyone is building AI agents, many companies are building AI agents and as a software engineer if you are looking to switch into AI agents and Gen AI space then learning Creo AI is super important for you. So first of all let's understand the curriculum of this course. So first of all, I have divided for now uh, this course into 11 parts. If in future I think that there are more things to cover, I'll add it. And in these parts, I'm going to add some projects also, which I've not yet decided. But as we move ahead, I'll be adding some projects in between the, these parts. So first of all, in this video itself, we'll be covering the course introduction. Introduction to RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. That is very important for an AI agent, for building an AI agent. So that will be covered in this part itself. Uh, in the next part, we'll be covering introduction to AI agents and what is a React agent. Now, don't get confused with React of web development, uh, the web development framework. Uh, this React means reasoning plus action. That's how a typical AI agent works today. Okay, so that will be covered in part two. Then we will be coding a React agent. Now till here, we won't be covering anything regarding Creo AI. We'll be covering the fundamentals of AI agents. Now coding a React agent means we'll be using just plain Python, no uh, agentic framework like Creo AI, Land Graph, Haystack, nothing. Just typical normal Python for building a simple React agent. Then we'll be covering uh, how to get start with uh, how to get started with Creo AI, like how to create a virtual environment, how to pull Creo AI, how to create a boilerplate project. Uh, which file is for what purpose that will be covered in this part 4. Then what is the difference between agents and tasks in Creo AI? Like agents, uh, agents are like uh, humans, they can perform a task. So you need to define agents also, tasks also and you have to define tools also. So uh, like uh, tools are nothing but there are certain predefined tools in Creo AI and you can create your custom tools also in Creo AI. That will be covered in part 8. But before that, we'll be covering the crew of AI agents. Crew means group of people. Here we are talking about group of AI agents, how to handle multiple AI agents in your system. So for that, you need to create a crew. It will be covered in part six. Then crew AI flows. So you can have multiple crews also in your AI system, in your agentic system. So that you can that you can handle using flows, crew AI flows. That will be covered in part seven. Then how to create a custom tool. Right, so you get basic tools like web search or PDF reading. But if you want to create your own custom tool, that will be covered in part eight. Then memory in Creo AI, like a human has some memory, right? If your AI agent won't have memory, then you have to again and again provide the complete context, right? So agents can also maintain their own state, their own memory layer, and you can do it in Creo AI also. That will be covered in part nine. Then we'll be building a simple RAG projects with RAG project with Creo AI will be covered in part time. Then how to observe your Creo AI agent. Like if you are building a typical software system also, you, you will be observing it, right? You have logs, traces, you have Prometheus, Grafana, you have to handle what is the server downtime, server cost, everything, right? So in AI agents, that is also software system. You have to observe it. Like uh, what are the tokens consumed? 
how much it is costing you uh, if the personal information about the user is not exposed or uh, like if the generation is correct or relevant or not so all of that needs to be observed in agents and using simple uh, line integrations of third party third parties you can observe your qi agents in production so all of that will be covered in this mini short course this is not a very long course uh, this is a short course i would say and you can watch this on youtube and in some time you can also watch it on udemy okay this is a free course i hope you will enjoy it now let's get started with introduction to uh, llms and rag so first of all you already under, you already know that we have an llm this llm can be gpt4 it can be uh, deep seek it can be gemini grok cloud uh, llama it can be any llm llm is your intelligence layer it is your brain right and you put a prompt to your llm that hey uh, what is the capital of france right so that can be a simple prompt to your llm so here i have asked hey which city is the capital of india now you are expecting an answer that answer in technical agentic terms it's called a response or an inference inference means the result or the response that your llm returns right so this simple process is called generation right you're not doing any rocket science here you put a question you get an answer that answer is called inference or response this is a simple process of generation right if you want to understand how llms work that is not covered in this course you can you can understand it by learning about transformer models right but this is how a simple generation works now if we go one step ahead we get rag now don't get confused by seeing this complete architecture let's go and understand it so rag which is retrieval augmented generation first of all what is the problem over here why we need to create a system like rag complex system like rag right so over here you cannot give it uh, so let's say today i think of writing a book on myself let's say i write an autobiography on akshit mana right on myself now if i want llm to answer some questions on that book right for now llm has all the context of all the books in the world it, it has access to wikipedia it can go and fetch content and uh, give you the answer uh, using some tool calls or using the context or using the pre training phase like it it has been trained on all the books of the world right it has been trained on all the wikipedia pages of the world so it can answer that but today if i write a book on myself of 1000 pages then it cannot answer on that book right because it has it does not have the knowledge about that book so for that uh, whenever you need to connect an external data source now that book is an external data source right which i want llm to read and answer on that book now for that we need retrieval augmented generation now as you can understand retrieval and augmented then generation so it is made up of three parts indexing first step retrieval second step generation again the same thing generation the third step but in this generation because of these first two step it will have knowledge about my book it will have knowledge about my autobiography right so how it is done in using indexing and then retrieval so let's say i have a book of 1000 pages now what i'll do is i'll convert it into embeddings now what are embeddings embeddings are nothing but uh, they are vectors so you understand vector space right in mathematics we have already uh, learned vector spaces like this is a vector right a vector has a magnitude it will have let's say magnitude 3 plus it is it is also having a direction so you already understand it is uh, depicted by i cap plus j cap Uh, if it is plotted in a 2d vector space so it will have it will be uh, represented like i cap plus j cap like it can be 3 i cap plus 2 j cap right so 3 and 2 are the magnitudes in those directions and i cap and j cap are representing the directions so that it can be plotted so this is how you can plot data if if you have a book all the strings all the content of that book can also be plotted as vectors now what is the significance let's say this is a vector which represents king i have a word king and it is representing that word now the word queen will be very near and aligned to this vector okay so this is another vector which is representing the another word queen now these two are very close to each other but let's say if i have dog now dog will be represented over here it will not be very close to queen king and queen right or if i represent poor guy let's say uh, or a beggar now it 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 might be close to king and queen but it might be in opposite direction right because king and queen are very rich 
and a beggar is very poor. So that's how words or normal English sentences can also be plotted on a vector space and this helps in semantic search. So that if tomorrow you think of uh, getting some words or some sentences near to the king and queen, you will get all the words or sentences near to that space. right? So that is how indexing or embeddings are generated. Embeddings means converting your normal English sentences to vectors so that they can be plotted and saved. So for that, you also have vector database, like you have MongoDB, you have SQL database, NoSQL databases, Firebase, all of those databases are there, right? Cassandra, there, and then there are some time series databases, then you have then you have Neo4j, which is a graph database. In the similar way, you have also have vector databases, like Pinecone, ChromaDB. So in these vector databases, you can save these embeddings. So you take your book, right? You you have book of pages, right? Let's say every page is converted into one embedding, or every sentence is converted into one embedding. Right? Now you save those embeddings in a vector database. Right? Now if tomorrow you put a prompt, over here my prompt is there, right? If tomorrow you put a prompt, hey, what type of food Akshit likes to have? Now because this is a this is a, this is a vector database or an index of all of my embeddings, all the embeddings of my book, then if you put a prompt which contains the word food or likings, then it will be able to fetch all the sentences near to those words like hey Akshay likes to have a burger right all of those sentences near to food and likings it will return back right now I have got the retrieve docs right which are having which are like similar to the prompt now instead of feeding the complete thousand pages to my LLM for every response or every generation I can just feed those retrieved docs those only four or five pages which have the information about my food likings, right? So I don't need to provide which school I went to or uh, whom I married. No, I did not have. To, I don't have to provide that information. I can just provide those retrieved pages, those retrieved documents, and I can send it to LLM. Okay. So that's how retrieval augmented generation works, where you can connect an external data source, convert it into embeddings, and save it into a vector database. And whenever you have a prompt relevant or matching docs or sentences will be fetched given to the LLM so that LLM can generate a response on top of that. Okay, so that's how RAG works and this is very important. Okay, next thing is AI agent which we will be covering in the next part. I hope you like this video and uh, you are till now you are enjoying this course and in this first part we covered generation, RAG and curriculum for this course. So in the next part, see you with um, some more information on AI agents and then React agent. Okay. Best of luck for your AI journey. Till the next video, keep coding and keep innovating.